everybody, welcome back to another episode of A Gardener's Journey Homestead. I am Barbara. I'm so excited to be with you today because this video is all about what seeds to start three weeks before your last frost date if you're in zone seven or just three weeks before your last frost date, right? So I'm in zone seven, I'm in Tennessee. And so my estimated last frost date is April the 20th. So we are three weeks away, really a little bit less than three weeks away. And I'm excited because we are getting so close to being able to planting our summer gardens. Now, if you're brand new here, welcome and thank you so much for being here. And let me tell you what's going on here, specifically with this video. So since the beginning of seed starting season, about 12 weeks ago, I started a seed starting playlist uh, or in this series. I started a series called the Seed Starting Playlist. I'll pop the playlist right up here. And I apologize, I'm, hopefully you can hear me. If you can see, it's raining, pouring down raining outside right now while I'm in the tunnel to shoot this video. But it's safer, not safer, it's drier for me to just stay in the greenhouse until this passes. So I'm gonna keep working and I'm gonna keep doing this video. Because um, right now it's just rain. There's no thunder. There's no nothing else. It's just a whole lot of rain, which is great uh, for my onions outside and all the other stuff. But hopefully you can hear me. Uh, so let's talk about what I've been doing. So since seed starting season, I created a playlist and every single week we start seeds together. So if you check out that playlist, you will see seeds um, and videos that we started from 12 weeks before the last frost date all the way up until today. So no matter where you are or what zone you're in, if you're ahead of me, then great. If you're behind me and you still um, need to catch up, then you can go back and watch those videos and see what I started six weeks before the last frost date because that may be where you are, right? So I did that as a resource because a lot of times people will either A, just start all their seeds at one time, or two, do nothing because they don't know what to do. And so I wanted to make sure that this particular year that I inspired, motivated, pushed, <laughs> in love, some people that have never started seeds to start seeds for the first time. Because I believe if you can start seeds, that is a game changer and it is gonna give you a skill that is almost irreplaceable and that's gonna save you time and money, okay? It's gonna save you time and money. So. I'm a big proponent of starting your own seeds. And I'll just tell you, when I first started seeds three years ago, it was horrible. Nothing survived, nothing got put out. I did not know what I was doing. And so I made it my business to watch videos, to research and to try again. I didn't try again the next year. Cause you know, sometimes you get a little bruised and it's like, um, I'm not doing that anymore. Y'all ever felt that way? Like you try something in gardening and it didn't go well, and you're like, I ain't doing that no more. And you, you, you feel a little bruised. That's okay. It's okay to have those moments. They just cannot be permanent. Let them be temporary. So the next year after my seed failure year, I didn't start any seeds. I bought all transplants. But then the year after that, two years later, I decided, okay, yes, let me start seeds and let me try this again. And that year I had success. I was blown away. And from then on, I've been starting seeds ever since. And I want you to know it's not as hard as you think it is. I have tons of videos, tons of resources in that playlist, all the way from where to buy your seeds, how to organize, how to know what seeds to start. So if you want just a wealth of information and education, you can go back and watch all those videos. If you're already up to speed and you're like, look, I'm in it now, let's, let's get to it, then this, let's just get to it, right? So this week's video, three weeks before the last frost date. Now, I wanna say something. Again, some, some of you are ahead of me. Your last frost date is next week or in two weeks. So you are a little bit ahead of me, but there are plenty of you that are behind me where your last frost date is not until the end of April or the 1st of May or something like that. So <clears throat> you can follow along and or catch up or whichever way um, it fits with you. So there's something for everybody. So. One of the things that I do each and every week is that I also show you the seeds that we started together the previous week. I do that so that you can see what the seedlings look like, what they should look like, and I show you my successes, things that went well and things that didn't go well. So that way you can see real life. Hey, we started these seeds together. I watched the video. I saw her put the seeds in it. And now seven days later, this is what they're looking like. So. I'm gonna insert that footage of the seeds that you and I started together last week. So last week, we started zinnias, squash, 
okra, and um, zucchini and corn. Yeah. So those are the things that we started last week on the video four weeks before last frost date. Let me show you how things fared in the last seven to eight days. Take a look. Hey guys, this is the first tray. So this is the tray of the squash and the zucchini that we started. Um, you can see overall only 50% germination. I usually have much better germ germination rate on squash and zucchini, but that's okay. We will start more. But the ones that did germinate look very, very good. Okay, y'all, this is the second tray that we did. This is the tray, the 72 cell tray of zinnias that we did. You can see overall, I would say maybe 60% germination. So again, um, I usually have like near 100% germination of zinnias. So this first row is the ones that I got from Florette um, Flower Farm. And let's see, it seems like I have eight maybe out of the 12. Um, and the rest is just spotty, as you can see. Um, now, some of these are older seeds. So maybe that's why, like in this whole row, I didn't get anything, anything at all. So I'm gonna retry and sow some more. Um, so some germination, but not as much as I expected. Here's the very last tray. This is the tray that we did corn and okra and squash. So the corn, that one, this brand or this variety did nothing. This one down here did good. This is the honey cream, had perfect germination. And then the silver queen, I had perfect germination. So those did well. You can see they look great. Um, but the other two varieties did not do as well. Y'all, no okra. I have one little one right there. That may be my sign. Um, but then on the honey patch squash from row seven, we had five out of six. So good germination and those look good. So those are the three trays that we started last week. Okay, so you guys saw that footage. Now, that was less than stellar, right? So overall, out of all those, what, three, three trays, the average germination was like 50 to 60%. That's pretty low compared to what we've been having. But I wanna show you that because that's real life. Every week, every seed is not 100%. Every week is not a stellar week. Every, every day is not your best gardening day. That is real life, but that is okay. Cause guess what? We got more seeds. Guess what? We got more soil. And guess what? We have the breath of life that we can start yet again. So that was last week. You can see I had pretty low germination, like overall squash, zucchini, um, um, the zinnias didn't do as well as they normally do. The corn did, you know, pretty okay. Now let's talk about this okra. This okra didn't germinate. And I'm wondering if that's a sign that I shouldn't do okra this year. So for those that are new, let, let me just clue you in on something. I love okra. I love to eat okra. But what I have discovered growing okra is that okra is a diva. And you know what? I'm a little bit of a diva too. And so it's, so, it's hard for two divas to, to kind of get along because I tell okra, hey, I'm gonna come pick you tomorrow. And she's like, uh, no, pick me today. And I'm like, no, see, I got to pick the tomatoes and the peppers and all that. And she like, but no, pick me today and every day until the end, of the end of the season. And sometimes my schedule just don't flow like that. And so what happens is the okra just gets mad. She gets all puffed up and big and she drops to the ground or she's not usable. So I don't know if I'm going to do okra again. I want to do okra, but she act funny. <clears throat> she acts funny so I, I don't know but maybe that was my sign because y'all saw I did try to start the seeds and the seeds did not germinate except for one I'm not 100% saying I'm not the jury is still out but we're gonna see but I'm not above buying some okra from a, a local organic farm and just you know buying it I'm not above that so we'll see but let's talk about what we're gonna do today <coughs> So excuse the coughing in between. If you didn't know, me and the family was kind of down for the count, but after six days, I have reemerged. We had the flu. It's been six days. I have reemerged. This is the best I have felt um, in seven days. So I'm back at it. So let's talk about what we're gonna do today. So three weeks before the last frost day, the things that you can start, 
Now, the things that we started last week, that we started last week, squash, zucchini, corn, okra, you can start those this week. So if you did not start those last week at the four week mark or at your four week mark, you can start them at the three week mark, right? You can even start them at the two week mark. Now, also watch that video last week because I talked about many people will say, hey, don't, um, don't start those seeds indoors because they're hard to transplant. And I talked about that on the last video, so I won't go over that. So if you want to know my thoughts on transplanting squash and zucchini and all that stuff, go back and watch that video. So today you can do squash, zucchini, corn, okra. But today what we're going to do, we're going to do cucumbers and we're going to do watermelon and what else? That's it. Yeah, I think that's all that's all I'm doing today. So at the three week mark, you can do squash, zucchini. Obviously, you could do lettuce. Um, if you're doing like, you know, some spring type of stuff. Um, you could do corn, you could do okra, you can do watermelon, you can do cucumbers. You could also be doing your sunflowers this week. I'm not doing my sunflowers this week. I'm gonna do mine next week at the two week mark, but you could do your sunflowers this week. So in terms of flowers, Remember, we started the bulk of our flowers at like the eight to seven weeks before last frost date, Mark. The only flowers we did not start back then were zinnias and sunflowers. We started our zinnias last week, so you could also start zinnias, excuse me, this week, and you could also start your sunflowers. Those are really the only two that you wanna wait up until now to start because they mature very, very fast and they germinate pretty easily. Sunflowers like they germinate you know pretty quickly so i'm not going to start all of those today i'm just going to do the cucumbers and the watermelon so let me tell you the cucumber varieties that i'm going to do and show you um the varieties for the cucumbers and the watermelon now i'm going to show you cucumber varieties i'm going to do for the season i'm not going to start all these varieties today intentionally because today i'm only doing cucumbers for my greenhouse and so the two varieties that I'm doing for the greenhouse is Katrina cucumber. This right here, if you have a high tunnel and you like cucumbers, I highly recommend this cucumber. It is the Katrina, it is from Johnny's. You're gonna see some sticker shock. But when I tell you, it is the most prolific cucumber I have ever grown. It is the most prolific cucumber I have ever grown. Now it's specifically for greenhouse production for a couple of reasons. One, it's been bred for the high heat and high humidity. So it is, it's gonna perform well in a greenhouse. Now, will it perform well outside of a greenhouse? I assume that it will, but because I, but because I have not done it, I don't wanna tell you that. And again, it, it's pricey, right? Like a pack of seeds is like, I don't know, 15 to $20, something like that. I know, I know, it's high. But when I tell you how many cucumbers that I received, it was unreal. In one week alone, we were gone for a week. Um, seven days on our farm, we were gone, right? When we came back, there were a hundred cucumbers on the vine from this variety. A hundred in seven days out of, let me see how many plants. It might've been like four plants. It's unreal. I was getting like 16 cucumbers a day off of a plant it, it's unreal and so especially like if you're into production like if you need cucumbers for production to sell you're gonna make your money back like hand over fist it's worth the twenty dollars because the production is so high that's my little spiel on the katrina cucumber so i will always grow the katrina cucumber in my tunnel other one i'm doing is straight eight i did this one last year it performed extremely well it was my first time doing it um, and so I'm gonna do that again. So these two I'm gonna do today and they're gonna be for the tunnel. Now I'm gonna show you the other varieties I'm doing, but those I'm not gonna start until much later because those are gonna be behind my house. So I do multiple successions of cucumbers. Now the Katrina, it lasted from the time that we put it out in um, May all the way until the end of, I would say August, right? So it performed well. But I also start cucumbers in the back of my house usually around july or so and i'll usually do like um, um another variety or something like that so i do multiple successions because cucumbers <coughs> cucumbers have a um a very quick maturity like you can get a cucumber within 50 to 60 days 
easily from the time you put it in the ground. So if you live in a zone like me that has a long growing season, you may be able to get two to three successions of cucumbers. So be thinking about that, depending on what zone you're in and how long your growing season is, or if you also have issues with pests and cucumbers, then just plan to have multiple successions. Now, one of the things, um, since I have been growing food um, since 2020, one thing I've always been able to grow is cucumbers. Like that has been a constant from the very first year. So cucumbers for me have been very, very easy. I've had great success. I have not had any pest issues. I've grown them behind my house in raised beds and I've grown them here in the ground. Um, and I've had success both ways. So the other varieties that I'm gonna do this year for cucumbers are, I'm gonna try the Socrates, which is a greenhouse variety. So I may start, you know what? I may start a couple of these today so I can compare this to the Katrina. <coughs> This is another new one, the sashimi, sashimi from Johnny's is a hybrid. This is from MI Gardener, the Sumter. I just, it's cute. It's like a little short cucumber. Looks cute. I want to grow it. Um, and then this one is the muncher from Baker's Creek. I'm going to try that one. And then the pickling cucumber. So I'm going to do some of those shorter varieties um, for pickling um, and for making pickles and things like that. So those will be mo mostly in the back of the house on the second succession. Also, I'm curious to see about freeze drying cucumbers um, because one of the things that I struggled with last year was about how to preserve cucumbers. Outside of pickles, <coughs> outside of pickles, what else do you do with your cucumbers, right? So I thought about freeze drying. I wonder if you could freeze dry and then maybe use it for like some tzatziki sauce or something. I don't know. If you got some ideas about cucumbers, put them down below. Let me know. So we're doing cucumbers and then we're doing watermelon. So today we're doing three different kinds of watermelon. We're doing um, sugar baby, standard, um, personal size watermelon. Always tastes good, grows well. We're doing um, strawberry watermelon. Fan favorite. Did this for the first time last year. Right now, it's the best tasting watermelon I have ever tasted. Best tasting watermelon, by far. So good, so, so good. Then we're trying a new one called the Sangria by Urban Farmer. It sounded good, it looked good, so I'm gonna try it. So those are the three that we're gonna try. Okay guys, just like that, we're done. So one of the things, um, first of all, when you get to this stage of the season, when it's you know, almost time to plant, um, then you're not doing as much, at least for me, like tomatoes and peppers, I did hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, I'm not doing that many. I will do more of these, but just for the purposes of today, I'm just doing this, um, this one tray and we got more to do um, on next week. And I just wanted to kind of show you and make sure that you knew what to start at three weeks before. But also the seeds are bigger. So cucumber seeds are bigger, watermelon seeds are big. You're not dealing with the little tiny micro, my, minuscule seeds. They're easy to pick up, plop in there. It goes so much faster when the seed is bigger. Um, and so yeah, here's our tray. We're gonna cover it with some um, vermiculite. I've already watered it in, but that tray is done. Um, so we have 16 cucumber and 16 um, watermelon. Let's get our vermiculite. Because, and I did two seeds per thing. Um, one just because I didn't know about germination <coughs> on some of them. And then just because I wanted to get two seeds in there because I'm using these two and a half inch bootstrap farmer pots. And so that's just my way of conserving on space. So I purposely seeded it too. So even though it says 16 of each one, if they all germinate, I'll have 32 um, of each. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have 32 of each one, which will be um, more than what I need. So, but then if it doesn't germinate, then I can just start more next week, uh, which I'll do anyway. So that's how that goes. So that is done. So I hope 
that this was helpful. I hope that this gives you um, inspiration and motivation to go ahead and start your seeds for this week, <coughs> whatever you need. And for those that are already ahead of me, um, I don't know who will be the earliest zone. I know that zone eight, um, I, I wanted to say that zone eight, if you're in zone eight, maybe your um, last frost date is like in a week or something. I don't know. Anyway, I know there's some people ahead of me and you're already able to plant out. If so, I'm right behind you. I cannot wait right let me know what questions you have let me know what you're starting let me know if you have been a first time seed starter I mean this is your first year starting seeds let me know what level of success you're having and how things are going remember garden is a journey let's grow together i'll see you next time friend